Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It was pretty easy in the 90s, back in the day. It was a different system, different buy, different everything, but today I'm gonna tell you pretty much how I made my first million dollars. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss nothing. If you are part of my crew, my raza, mi pandilla, my gang, my family, you already know. Suba la Suburban. Let's take a ride down memory lane. Pretty much I'm gonna tell you a little story about myself today, how I made my first million dollars when I was in the game. Back in the day, it was a lot easier because, I, I shouldn't say it was a lot easier, it was just a different game, a different hustle, a different time on the streets. So, it was a lot easier to make money if you were, had a direct wholesale buy connection. And But what I mean by that is that you were buying directly from the source in Mexico, pretty much, you know, you weren't. You were getting already. You were getting quality, 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 not quantity. <laughs> so, I mean, you think about it. Every time a load makes it from one place to another, everybody likes to take their piece out and then put it back together and send it this way. People don't realize it ends up turning into a lot when you keep doing it and you're getting quantities. And what I mean by that is that, say you get a load of 50 mattresses and you take one ounce off of each mattress. Now you have 50 ounces, you know? And it adds up like that. Then came the 90s and in the 90s came the re-rock. I actually got sent to Mexico to learn how to re-rock. And what I mean about re-rock is you take one and you make two. So think about it. You're buying one for $17.5. That was the prices in the 90s and early 2000s. If you had a connect, $17.5. I used to get rid of them for $15.5. It is what it is. Like, you know, a lot of people like used to like to make a thousand off each one. A lot of people used to like to make less. I mean, I really did. I wasn't greedy to a certain point. My whole thing is that I wanted to push them as fast as I could and get rid of them. I was like, a mess when I used to have stuff at home. I, would, I wouldn't sleep. I would be walking around all night with a gun thinking that people were gonna break in and rob me. And I mean, it, it did happen a couple of times. I mean, but that's a whole other story, another video. You know, yeah, I've been tied up twice actually. <laughs> it's the feeling while you're tied up is, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's not good. <laughs> you feel like uh, you're gonna poop on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on one occasion I, I pissed on myself because you can't control it the fear in your heart like you your life flashes through your eyes so you know you your bowel movements are very hard to control but anyhow anywho back in the day re-rock was the big big thing to make money so like I said you buy one for 17.5 you make two and you sell both of them for seventeen five. If that not if that's not a come up, I don't know what is. That's how I made money because I was getting really good quality. Quality. I was getting really good quality, and then I was making that quantity. And you know, for people, um, 
once for people that are buying on the street, by the time it hits the street, guess what? That shit ain't even 50%. It's already less than that. That's why you'll get those knots in your nose where you got erasers coming out of your nose. You feel like crap, you're pooping on yourself. And that's the funny part is that people do a bump and then they'll be like, oh my God, I'm pooping on myself. It's really good stuff. And I'm like, no, it's because they cut it with lactose. <laughs> and that's why you're shitting on yourself. It's not that it's good shit, but in the a addict's mind, it it's good stuff because you're pooping and, and all that stuff. I mean, I know, I've been there. Guess what? I've been an addict too. I used to run around the house with a whole mattress in my hand, sniffing it all night, running around with a gun, laying on the floor, peeking under the door, telling my wife to shut up that they were out there <laughs> and that they were coming. <laughs> you know, um, and, and like I, I tell you guys, I share my stories not to like glamorize everything because nowadays I think about it and I just laugh. I laugh at how I used to act. I laugh about how I used to run around. And, and that's the thing is that my, my whole point is to show you the other side of the coin because it's not what it's cut out to be. Like you could have all the money in the world, but you could still be miserable and rotting in the inside because of bad choices, bad everything, you know? And, and especially if you're poisoning your body and everything, then you're stressed on top of that because you're constantly thinking that the feds are parked in front and sometimes they are. <laughs> sometimes they are. When you're moving weight, sometimes they are parked in front and they are following you, you know what I mean? And that's the thing. I go back and I remember when I was making all that money, I half of my head was actually bald from right here. It was bald. I never I actually thought that I was going to have like um that line, that reciting line that goes all the way back. But it was because of the stress. As soon as I got out the dope game and everything, and I went to prison and everything, my hair just grew back. It was the stress that was making me feel like that. You know, and, and the money in my, in my closet. I ended up getting robbed by some of my best friends. You guys have seen my videos. I ended up getting robbed by people that I try to help, you know, people that I would meet in the system and they got out. I'm gonna tell you a story on my next video about somebody that I met in the system that was actually like my brother, brother inside there. And then when we got out, you know, I was doing really, really good. So he got out and I, I looked out for him and he ended up robbing me. He's not around no more. He passed away because, you know, he was he was an addict and, and uh, he cleaned up while he was in prison. But when he got out, he ended up, you know, doing the same thing. My biggest problem is that I would trust people way too much. And I always wanted to see people win, you know. And that was the thing that when I was in the dope game, I wanted to see people win. And that's what made everybody turn against me that was high up in rank in my organization is that they wanted to keep everybody hungry. And when I started getting, you know, doing good, I actually started looking out for these dudes. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of these dudes won't tell you, but this 180 means something. And a lot of dudes have a tattooed on them and you know who you are. I don't have to say no names. You know who you are. Yeah. They used to call me Brazer back then. But, you know, haters will be haters. They'll talk shit. They see me on here now and they talk even more shit because that's, that's how it is, man. People usually that are unhappy with themselves always wanna see other people unhappy also in there. Misery loves company, you know what I mean? But like I said, I share my story so you guys can get a laugh, ex you know, experience something that I experienced and learn and, and don't make the mistakes that I made because that's not what it's cut out to be. All the money in the world, you can have all the money in the world, but you're still not gonna be happy. You're still not gonna be content. You're still gonna have, you know, issues and stuff like that. Now, I live a whole different life. Like I said, you know, I get up, I go to the gym, I train, I spend time with my wife, my dogs, and that's what we do. And most people might say that we live a boring life, but you know what it is? You know, the truth is, is that I know the feds ain't parked in front. I know the feds ain't uh, following me when I'm driving to the store and 
I sleep at night. That's what I told I told a guy yesterday because he's like, what's the big, what's the biggest change in your life now that you're this person? I said, you know what? I sleep at night not thinking that somebody's gonna kick that door to either arrest me or kill me. And to me, that's priceless. It's priceless. My name's JC. I am Wrong or Strong. Remember guys, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane, live savage, and you only have one life to live. But if you live it right, one life is all you need. I'll check you guys out later.